Hi Mark, I'm just gonna go through your email from the, the points you made this afternoon. Um, so it's the the question of, of uh, is that how you, sh how you should feel playing tennis? Should I be trying to brush the ball or is that an exaggeration? No, it's definitely not an exaggeration. You should be brushing the ball. Uh, the velocity of, of the stroke comes from the horizontal motion. The spin comes from the vertical motion and putting those two together uh, is crucial for the for the, for the shot you get in that's where the combination of power and spin come from putting that motion with this motion you shouldn't separate them but that that just makes it easy to understand so it's crucial that you're swinging up at a tangent and it's about 60 degrees uh, second point I'm a little confused regarding the windshield wiper motion I have watched a lot of videos that say some of these use the motion and others say create too much wrist movement. What are your thoughts? Yeah, that's a great question. It comes up a lot. There's different schools of thought out there. Uh, I'm firmly in one camp. The wrist is definitely involved. But I'll explain to you why I say that. So this, you can, some people say you can create, um, so that's the, the windshield wiper. It's the windshield wiper, but it's on the side, right? Um, some people say that that motion is created um, how do we do that? Is yeah, it's just by long axis rotation of the arm. I, I'm not using my wrist there. I can, I'm doing that right. Some people say that's how you create the windshield wiper. Others say you can use your wrist in that motion as well, and that's the sort of um, ulna to radial deviation. You see, my arm is kind of straight, but I've actually managed to move my wrist this this amount, right? But if I add in the long axis rotation, I can do a lot more. So there are two things there. There's ulna to radial deviation in the hand. That's the wrist. That's the wrist movement. Then there's long axis. That is the long axis uh, rotation of the forearm. So the elbow is below and it finishes out to the side. You've, you've turned the arm over. So I believe in using both of those two things together. Uh, but some will say the wrist is locked and you can get, you can get topspin from a sort of a half windshield wiper without your wrist. I don't believe that, but there, there are few, there are people out there that do. And then there, there's the, the others that believe tennis is a, a sport which involves extension, where, you, where you're hitting through the ball, which is complete, I mean, I feel that is complete nonsense, and I'll send you a video that, that just shows you how untrue that is. Um, the, the thing is, if you're hitting a ball out in front, there, right? There's nowhere more for you to go. You've got to, at that point, start going up. So you'll see contacts made over there. And at this point, the racket starts to pull across. You can't push through. And it, it doesn't happen when you look at slow motion footage of the pros. So um, I think that that just about covers. The, the best illustration is, is in this um, gentleman's blog post where he takes photographs and he shows just uh, each step of the swing path. and. Uh, explains why it is a, um, a misconception to think that, it, that there's this extension. There is a little bit. It probably goes forward a couple of inches, but to try to teach yourself to hit through three balls, that's a, that's a terrible idea. The control in tennis comes from topspin, and you've got to literally rip the racket up as fast as you can to get that spin. Um, look, I'd happily do a FaceTime call with you, and I can, I can actually, we can talk about it and uh, with the Tospin Pro you can get yours out I can see what you're doing and we can cover that way happy to do that too but but see let's see if, if this um, if this response helps um, yeah uh, yeah good luck